The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to our service of worship on this, the most wonderful Sunday of the whole Christian year, Easter Sunday. The day that, that changed our whole calendar, the first day of the week, the day of the risen Lord. In the Old Testament, Saturday was the Sabbath, but to Christians, the resurrection of Jesus, him rising from the grave on this glorious day, meant so much that they changed it all around. This became the day of the Lord, the first day of the week. You've probably heard a million sermons on Easter Sunday, but this morning I'm going to let history, the Bible, just speak for itself. I'm going to invite you to come back to a person, a fisherman, Peter was his name, and see exactly what this day meant to him, what happened to him. And just standing there with Peter, maybe this day will have a new meaning for, for you and me. For in a way, I always think that, in so many ways, I am Peter. We had a wonderful prof professor in, in philosophy at the University of Pretoria, Professor Piet Dreyer. What a wise man! He, he had a way with philosophy that nobody else had. Younger lecturers tried to use big words to impress us for being clever and wise. But Professor Piet, when he walked in, he, he spoke a simple language, but he condensed the most complicated truths into something that we could understand. He was a big strong man, he was a Springbok wrestler, Olympic wrestling, but his strength lie here and I think here. And he wrote a beautiful book, Pietrus die wankelende rots, Peter the wobbling rock, showing us the humanity of Peter and yet Jesus said you are the rock upon whom I will build my church. So I'm going to do that today. We're going back in time to the Sea of Galilee with Peter in his boat and just relive the story. So come, journey with us to the Sea of Galilee and the fisherman, Peter. springs up green when our hearts 
hearts are sad and grieving or in pain. By your touch you call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come Lord Jesus, on this wonderful morning we praise you once more for the good news of this day, the triumphant message of resurrection, new hope, new joy, new life. You are risen, you are risen indeed. We praise you for what we see in the Easter stories, your love that could not be kept down, your purpose that could not be defeated, your goodness that could not be destroyed. You are risen, you are risen indeed. Teach us that what was true then is true now. That resurrection is not just about life after death, but about constant new beginnings. The way you are able to transform every part of our lives. The way you are always bringing renewal. And may that truth inspire us to keep on following you, not only through the good, but the bad. You are risen. You are risen indeed. Jesus, when life seems hard, when we feel overwhelmed by trials and situations, when faith seems to fly in the face of reason, assure us once more that your love will not be overcome. For you are risen. You are risen indeed. When our work seems to bear no fruit, when our efforts go unrewarded, when our hopes and dreams remain unrealized, teach us that your purpose will ultimately be fulfilled in us. For you are risen, you are risen indeed. When the innocent suffer, when goodness is rejected, when evil appears victorious, teach us that right will finally emerge victorious for you are risen you are risen indeed lord jesus now grant us the deep inner assurance which only easter can bring that whatever life brings whatever we face however things may seem your will shall be done and your kingdom come Lord Jesus, you are risen, you are risen, indeed. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterward, Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter... Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were there. I'm going out to fish, Simon told them, and they said, We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they got nothing. Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. 
The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, So they, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Thanks be to God. There's a man in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. What was I thinking? Peter mumbled to himself. He stared at the bottom of his boat. Why did I run? Why did I betray Jesus? Why did I deny him three times? I was the one who said to him, Lord, Everybody else will desert you. Everybody else will run away, but I'll stick to you. I have your back right until the end. And yet, he did betray his friend three times. And now he stares at the bottom of his boat, a broken man. You see, he had turned his back on the sea many moons ago to follow the Messiah. He had left his boats at Galilee, thinking he would never return, but now he's back, full circle. Same sea, same boat, maybe even the same spot. 
But there is a difference. It's not the same Peter. You see, three years of living close to Jesus had changed him. He had seen too much. The empty tomb where Lazarus walked out, a little girl dead, and Jesus saying, Talita kumi, little girl, wake up. And she, she wakes up from death itself. He has seen so many crippled people walk again. Blind men could see. And then the hours of just listening to the voice of Jesus, that gentle voice with his stories, the parables that no one could ever forget. It changed him. So, why did he run? What made him come back to Gil Galilee after the crucifixion? Was it despair or maybe a little hope? Hope? I wish to think it was hope. You see, hope dies hard for a man who knew Jesus. Hope is a little seed that never just goes away. But he's struggling. Why did I deny Jesus? Why did I run? And then his thoughts are interrupted by a cry from the shore. A voice drifting over the waters. Catch any fish. Peter and John look up. Maybe a villager there. It's far away. Busybody. But they are polite. No. And then that voice drifts over the water again. Like once long ago in the first chapter of Genesis, a voice drifting over the water. Try the other side. John looks at Peter. What's, what's the harm? We haven't caught any fish. Let's give it a try. So, out sails the net. And Peter wraps the rope around his waist and waits to see what happens. But there's no wait. The rope pulls taut. The net is full of gleaming fish. Peter sets his weight against the side of the boat and then he pulls in, so focused on his job, going down and pulling up, reaching down, pulling up, hauling in all the fish. Peter is so busy doing his job that he misses the message. But John doesn't miss the message. John seldom misses the moment or the message, for this is déjà vu. This has happened before, exactly the same. The long night, the empty net, and then the voice of a stranger telling them to try again, cast out your net on the other side. And then fish flapping on the floor of the vessel. Wait a minute. He lifts his eyes to the stranger on the shore. It's him, he whispers. Then louder, Peter! It's Jesus. Peter stares in amazement. Jesus has come back, but not Jesus the teacher, Jesus the King. The King who had conquered death itself, and the King is building a fire on the beach. The King is preparing a barbecue for his friends. Yes, he's preparing a meal again, like on Thursday evening. Peter jumps into the water and swims as fast as he can to the shore. He stumbles out of the water and then he stands wet and shivering before the man he betrayed. Peter had failed God, but God never fails us. It's the old story of the covenant, the old story of that starry, starry night when God made a promise to Abraham and his children. For what, probably the first time in his life, Peter 
is at loss of words. He cannot speak. He has no words. I think this moment is just too holy. Too holy for words. God is offering breakfast to a friend who has betrayed him. That night when he served the bread and the wine, he broke bread even for Judas, knowing Judas was going to betray him. You see, this is God's love that is different from our love. Chesed, loving kindness. I look up again at the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in, in Rome, that beautiful painting by Michelangelo, God and Abraham, but then the two hands almost touching. God again is reaching out to Adam and you and me on this wonderful morning, Easter morning. So here we stand like Peter, perhaps also wet and shivering in front of the Master. What shall we do? How shall we celebrate this day? We might perhaps keep it simple and consider what Peter does, just to stand amazed in the presence of God. Stand in his sight, look up to him, speechless, the moment is too holy for words. Sometimes that's all a soul can do. Too repentant to speak, too hopeful to leave. We just stand here, stand amazed. For Jesus has come back from death itself. He has conquered death for Peter, for you and for me. And today he tells us, cast out your nets, try the other side. He invites us to try again, to make this new day the beginning of the rest of my life. And like in Genesis 1, the voice drifts over the waters of our lives again. Cast out your nets again. I'm with you. I've always been with you. And I will always be with you. Try the other side. Try life, try living again, for I am with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Yes, the risen Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face toward you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.